Hi everyone, welcome to Frappe School. This is the first chapter in our procurement course and today we will be discussing suppliers. By the end of this chapter, we will know the importance of managing supplier master data, how to set defaults in supplier in ERP Next and supplier groups in ERP Next. Let's first understand how buying and suppliers are vital to a business. Buying is an essential part of any business, whether as an organization you are buying production materials, equipment or utilities that your organization needs, buying most always needs to be streamlined and set up before any selling process. And when we talk about suppliers, a supplier is any company or an individual that provides you with any products or services. It is important to maintain correct and complete data of transactions with suppliers. This will help you maintain relationships with them and prove as records for any legal or operational reasons. Supplier data also helps in monitoring performance and productivity and make purchase decisions based on a supplier's history with your organization. Let's see how supplier data management works in ERP Next. First, we'll cover the basics of creating a supplier in the system. Since suppliers are a part of the buying process, we can navigate from home to the buying module and go to supplier under the supplier section. Here we can see a list of all existing suppliers and can create a new one by clicking on add supplier. We can name the supplier and add them to a supplier group by selecting from the drop down list. Suppose we want to add a hardware supplier called GG Electricals, we can add it here. Then we can specify if this supplier is an individual or an organization. Next, we can add a default bank account and select a GST category for this supplier. We can add their tax ID and tax category, PAN card details and tax withholding category as well. Selecting a tax withholding category like TDS will ensure that it is fetched directly into the purchase invoice for the supplier. Now, we can explore these checkboxes which will help us define specific rules for this supplier. For example, if we select the allow purchase invoice creation without purchase order checkbox, the system will allow a user to create a purchase invoice for this supplier without an existing purchase order. Selecting this checkbox will also override this setting in buying settings. The same goes for allow purchase invoice creation without purchase receipt. Even if it is marked as a necessity in the system's buying settings, if we select this checkbox, the system will allow a purchase invoice to be created for this supplier even if there is no existing purchase receipt. The warn and prevent requests for quotation and warn and prevent purchase order checkboxes that we see here are automatically enabled based on this supplier's scorecard. ERP Next supplier scorecard feature allows the system to grade suppliers based on their performance. We can configure a supplier scorecard so that purchase orders or requests for quotation cannot be permitted for suppliers with a lower grade. In that case, if this supplier ends up having a low score or grade, these checkboxes will automatically be enabled as configured. If this supplier is an internal supplier or provides you transport services, we can select the appropriate checkboxes to categorize them and specify which company they represent. Next, we can set the currency 
and price list for this supplier. We can type in a currency and select a price list. If we want to ensure that this supplier has a credit limit, we can select a payment term template for this supplier here in the credit limit section. Moving on to contacts and addresses. It is important to keep a clear record of any supplier's exact address and correct contact information. We can add details of a supplier organization's primary contact and address here in the primary address and contact details section. Usually, the default payable account for suppliers is set as creditor. To customize another payable account for this supplier, we can add that account information here. We can select the company and select a new default account here. When we have added all necessary details, we can click save and create a supplier. Once saved, we can directly view this supplier's accounting ledger and account payable using the view button. At the top of any supplier, we can see an overview section that contains a heat map device that will record any transactions or actions taken against this supplier. The more transactions taken, the darker the color field in that day will be. ERP Next allows us to create supplier groups based on various categories. For example, suppose you have a set of suppliers that provide you with raw materials. In that case, you can create a supplier group and select that group whenever you add a supplier who belongs to that category. To create a supplier group, we can navigate from the buying module and go to supplier group under the supplier section. Here, we can view any existing supplier groups. If we want to view it in a tree form, we can go to menu and view list. We can create a new supplier group by clicking on add supplier group. Here, we can name the group and select a parent group for this particular supplier group. Suppose, we want to create a supplier group for raw material suppliers. Then we will type in If we want to create more groups under this supplier group, we can also select the Is group checkbox. If we want to add a credit limit for this supplier group and enable it for all suppliers in this group, we can select a payment terms template. Once done, we can save this supplier group and it will be added to the supplier group list. This brings us to the end of our first chapter in the procurement course. I hope this helped you understand how to create suppliers and supplier groups in ERP Next. You can read more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will discuss material requests.